if you're going headless and decided to go with a pre-built storefront, the next decision obviously is which one should you choose? To help you work out which one is the best for you, I created a really simple framework with nine questions, nine considerations that you could use to help you select a storefront. And I did a video on that a while ago, and I'll leave the link in the corner for you. But after that video, I had a bunch of people reach out to me and say, John, could you do some reviews using that framework for us with some of the top front end of the service and some of the top storefronts out there. So that's what I did. I chose four storefronts. I did four sets of reviews using that framework and I compiled it together into a single video and a conclusion at the end. And then what I found out was that it was way too long. So what I've decided to do is split them out into separate videos. So that's four different reviews followed up by a review. And I'll start to deliver that to you guys so you can select which ones you want to watch and it's more easy to consume. Okay, just a note on the process and the methodology I use. Yes, I used my nine considerations that I did in the video, but I also did a whole bunch of other things. For PWA and performance characteristics, I used the Google Lighthouse scores. This helps give me a little bit of objectivity, although ultimately a lot of these results are down to how the site is actually implemented. So what I tried to do to neutralize that was to take three example sites from each storefront and to do an analysis of both mobile and desktop. And not only that, I did those tests five times and took the highest results for each of those combinations. I then took those highest results, averaged them out to give me a good indication of how the storefront might be performing. Anyway, the first storefront I'm gonna do is Frontastic which was acquired by Commerce Tools. So I hope you enjoy it. Fantastic was an independent storefront founded back in 2017 before it was acquired by Commerce Tools just about a year ago in 2021. And I did a video on that called Commerce Tools Gets Ahead. And if you're interested in that video and you're in interested in my views on the acquisition, why not take a look? I'll leave the link in the corner for you. So let's start with a review. Let's begin with the first point, the tech stack. The skills you're gonna need with Frontastic are React, Next, and standard JavaScript. The Frontastic high-level architecture is separated into four pieces. First of all, the developer tools like the CLI and the staging environments. Then we have the ABI hub, which allows you to connect with other external third-party APIs using an extensions model. Then we have the Frontastic Studio, which is really a business UI for organizing pages and organizing components and layouts on those pages. And then we have front-end delivery, which is really about delivering the website, delivering that web store and providing tools for managing it, such as deployment, CI, CD processes, and monitoring, and also the security layers. Number two, how open is the storefront tech platform? Well, Frontastic was independent, right? So it already has a whole bunch of integrations for platforms, including Commerce Tools, Spryker, Shopify, and Shopware. Whether those integrations will persist in the new version, which is version two in beta, I don't know. But right now in version one, you already have integrations into a whole bunch of e-commerce platforms and CMSs. Number three, how many progressive web app application or PWA characteristics does the storefront have? To do this, as I said earlier, I tested three Frontastic websites using Google Lighthouse and then basically averaged the scores out to give me an idea of the characteristics and how well it performs as a PWA. For SEO, it scored pretty high at a 92% average. Best practices were pretty good as it got an average of 87. Fantastic seems to be pretty good for accessibility as it got an 86 average. However, the most shocking thing for me was the mobile performance score, which was 37 which is pretty low for a PWA. However, the desktop performance was pretty good as it had an average of 83. There is a caveat. These results may be down to the actual implementations of Frontastic on these particular sites. So let's move on to number four, the rendering implementation. Now, Frontastic uses Next.js and as so, it actually takes advantage of the server-side rendering. But what I haven't found is any examples of 
Static Site Generation or SSG. And it seems that it doesn't actually do that right now. You never know, that might be in the new version two beta. Let's just see what happens. Number five, how flexible is the user experience? Well, Frontastic comes with 30 components out of the box, all written in React. These components can be customized and it does have basic theming that allows you to create color schemes that you can use inside the studio. It's pretty basic, but it's there. And as I said, Frontastic does come with a studio that allows you to organize your pages, organize the layouts, move your components around, but this may be redundant if you're using a headless CMS. Responsive design is built into Frontastic and it does follow many of the best practices as we validated with the Google Lighthouse scores. Number six, let's focus on the platform. How are the storefronts deployed and hosted? Frontastic is a multi-tenanted platform with auto scaling and monitoring and all of the CI CD processes all built in. Frontastic is PCI compliant, but I couldn't find any published SLAs, but maybe these are inherent in the overall commerce tools SLAs. Number seven, integration and API orchestration. Frontastic has a BFF called the API Hub, which basically allows you to connect your components to your API calls in your third-party services and your vendor services. It comes with features to make your components that rely on APIs more fault tolerant for when those APIs may be failing or may not be performing correctly. As I said earlier, there are several out of the box integrations into e-commerce platforms and headless CMSs. Not only that, you can update those integrations or create new integrations using their extensions framework. And that extension framework also supports queries to GraphQL providers as well as REST APIs. Number eight, support. It wasn't clear from the Frontastic pages how support works, but I'm suspecting that it's actually rolled into the Commerce Tool support mechanism. The documentation for Frontastic is a little basic and slightly ambiguous between what's available in version 1.1 and what's in version 2, which is now beta. The final one, number nine, ecosystem. Commerce Tools has a very large ecosystem of SIs and a very large community. And now what will be really interesting is, will those SIs and that community start migrating towards Frontastic? That's yet to be seen. It seems to me that Frontastic is going through a transition right now as it becomes more aligned to commerce tools. And it's great to see that it's getting the investment it needs. Frontastic uses popular tech like React, Next.js and even supports GraphQL for queries. Frontastic has a solid approach to separating the concerns between the front end and the component tree and the API orchestration. But what's gonna be interesting to see is, will it continue with the number of integrations with other third party e-commerce platforms that are not commerce tools? I'm definitely hoping that the new version two, which is in beta, is a considerable upgrade from the 1.1 and kind of eliminate some of the possible problems I've seen with PWA compliance and mobile performance. However, these issues could be down to developer implementation, as I said earlier, as it did score highly on accessibility, on SEO and best practices. Currently, what's unclear to me about Frontastic is its strategy. Is it going down an out of the box storefront for SMBs? Or is it going down the kind of Mac enterprise composable route? I'm really looking forward to the new evolution of version two. And perhaps if I can get a copy, if you're out there, Commerce Tools, give me a ring. If I can get a copy, I may try it out over Christmas, during the Christmas break, or maybe the beginning of next year to see how it rolls. But that's it for Frontastic. And the next review will be coming shortly. And I'll leave a link up here when it comes and I'll put it on the end screen so you can follow it through once it's published. But if you're not already subscribed, press that subscribe button. If you like this video, press the like button. And if you really wanna keep up to date with all the reviews coming up and the summary at the end, it might be worth clicking on the bell button so you get notified when they turn up. But for now, it's time to say, Thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.